Hello again, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Game Pass Grab Bank, your weekly podcast reviewing games in the Game Pass collection, bringing you three unique perspectives of varying skill range. I am the time traveling fighter of this episode, Andrew. With me, the one who gets lost in the land before time, Keith. Hello. And the one who never knows what time it is, Liz. Hey, guys. And this week, we played Exoprimal by Capcom, or as I like to call it, Dynasty Warriors. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Exoprimal is a PvPVE, or technically it's supposed to be PvEVP, but whatever. Uh, it, Exoprimal is a third-person action hero shooter where you are picking between various mech suits, each with their own set of range of skills and class rules, and you are sent back by a rogue AI in the back in the past, and you are essentially shooting a whole lot of dinosaurs. But going around, Liz, was this a gamer pass for you? Ah, oh, you had to start with me. <laughs> Because I already know me and Keith's answer. Um, uh, I mean, I feel like I could be swayed later on in the episode. <laughs> but I, I'm very much in the middle. And so usually I lean towards a game, if, it, if that's the case. But I think I might give it a pass. Because, I mean, I wouldn't choose to play this again. But if you asked me to, I would. Um... So, yeah, I guess a pass. Lame. Uh, this is a game <laughs> for me. I had so much fun with Exo Primal. Uh, if any of you follow us on our Twitter or X, uh, when I first booted this up and this first came to Game Pass, I really did not like it because this game does something awful where it like needs you to sign into an email address, create a Capcom net account, and then like re-enter your information. You just had to jump through way too many hoops. And I got so frustrated. Usually I don't care. I don't care if a game studio has my email address or like some of my information. I like to me it doesn't bother me. But this game was like really annoying. It it literally took about like 10, 15 minutes to just sign into the game. But I gotta say it's worth it. Exo Prime was so much fun. Me and Keith, you know, we're big time Overwatch fans. And this is essentially Overwatch, but with actual like pve moments but the pvp is a lot of fun yeah if you're if you're kind of a fan of overwatch and you're looking for something way more relaxing and fun check out exo primal do, do you just want to give your score now too while you're, while you're out there, there. <laughs> i'm giving it a 10 out of 100 oh it's yeah just, i actually hate it it's just, this is this is a big old this is a big old joke it's just gonna climb as, as the episode yeah. goes on like, oh. i wanted to have people think i really enjoyed this game that at the end be just Tell everyone's a big dumpster fire. Dang, that's curveball. They're never gonna see it coming. Um, I spoiler alert. I think I think this might be my. I don't know if it's my. No, it can't be my first. We're in August, September, whenever the heck we are. This is a definite game. It's um, it, it's so much fun. Like when I saw Exo Primal, I didn't. I don't know if I knew the layout of what the gameplay was gonna be. But I just saw massive amounts of dinosaurs and just chaos. And I thought, boy, that kind of looks that looks pretty fun. And then you told me about the intro and I went, this is going to be so annoying. And I was so mad. But hot diggity dang. This game is just it's fun. And it's fun on fun on fun, because as we'll talk about, the more you play, it just keeps adding um i obviously there is some point where it caps out on what it adds to the game but we've probably put in easily what 20 plus hours if i were to bet i had 23 and i just like there's constantly like oh crap what the heck is this and it just keeps happening in the best ways possible so this is a definite game i it's fun to play by yourself and 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 you can get by but man especially if you can get a, a team together and play with some friends i was just having a ton of fun playing well with both of you guys this was a rare one we all played together uh, but you know you and i put in a chunk of hours together too that was just tons and tons of fun so definite game Dude, well keith do you just want to give your score now <laughs> 92 <laughs> yeah 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 how does that feel keith good because i gave a real I'm, score and that's probably what i'm actually I'm gonna not- give it <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. Got that but, off yeah. my chest early. Whew. <laughs> All right, but let's get to the story of Exo Primal. Uh, so Exo Primal is strictly a multiplayer game. So this is, you know, in it, 
you know, there's already has been, you know, numerous games that have come out and it's just multiplayer only. And yeah, there's a story, but it's you got to dig through lore or check in the background of the maps you're playing. Like it, it's like a barely any lore in this game. But in Exo Primal, this is I got to say the first time a only multiplayer game has legitimately has a story and I actually liked the story. I liked how it was presented. I mean, they could have done a little better with the presentation of it because it is a lot of just talking heads. But I actually really liked the lore of Exoprimal. You know, as I said, you're this crew of, you know, Exo fighters, which are these pilots that create that pilot these mech suits, and you're you're patrolling an island that has been essentially quarantined. You know, it's ground zero to this area where these Dinosaurs just start popping up all over the world out of these vortexes. And it all started at this island called Bikatoa. And, you know, something happens. Your ship crashes on the island and you find out that there's this rogue AI that is teleporting crashed pilots from other universes back to the past. And he's making you run these war games where you're just shooting hordes of dinosaurs. And so you are trying to find a way to unravel the mystery as to what happened to Bikatoa and how to get off of this island as you are constantly being sent back in time to fight these dinosaurs. But yeah, I thought the story was awesome. I actually really like this lore and the way I thought they presented it was awesome. See, I know that you disagreed with me when I said this to you earlier, but I really wish that this game had a campaign mode because for me, the gameplay, I put like a fraction of the amount of time that you guys did and it was already feeling samey to me. I feel like this style of story would be great with like a game like Apex or something where during the gameplay, you really don't know what's coming. And I know that the gameplay wise, there are a couple like turn of events that can surprise you later on. I think you said around like level 30 or something. Yeah. Oh, but sooner actually. Overall, oh, sooner. But overall, it's I just found it the gameplay too samey. And so for me, like I was interested in the story. story, not gameplay. Don't don't mention gameplay. You can't use those words. <laughs> Get out of here. You're off the podcast. I think you think you can tell me what to is this, say. Is this your first time podcasting, Liz? <laughs> We're on story. But I also feel like I wasn't getting the same character investment because I'd play a bunch of rounds with you and then I would go back to the story. And like you said, it's talking heads versus like the cinematic scenes I thought were really were really great. And so for me, I just like I wanted more. <laughs> well, you would get more if you kept playing. I know, but it's like. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I, I see where you're coming from. Because you originally said, when I told you that I, w I wanted a campaign mode, it's like, oh, it's just because you're a noob that you feel that way. But I do truly think that a game like Apex, like I would love this added story and I wouldn't feel like I was missing out on something. But because the gameplay wasn't enough for me either, that's why it made me feel like I'm missing out. So, so I guess I should explain how the, the story is kind of given. Uh, as you're playing the game, you know, you're, you level up your player account, you level up, you know, your suits. But just by playing rounds, whether win or lose, you you acquire a story portion, whether it's like, oh, here's a document in which the characters will talk about it. Sometimes you get a cinematic. You're essentially progressing through the story by just playing the game. But since this is a multiplayer game, it doesn't force you to watch these cinematics or these story elements you're unlocking. So this is what I loved about it was I'm playing with Keith. We're having a great night. We just played 10 games in a row. Okay, we're calling it for a night. But, you know, I'm probably going to stay up for a little bit longer. I can now go back and watch all of these things that I learned about and see the story on my own time when my friends aren't here anymore. And I loved that it kind of gave me this option of kind of going through it. Not only that, you can also revisit it. So if there's a cutscene and your friends are waiting for you to ready up, you can skip the cutscene and just go back to it. But yeah, like we've played so many multiplayer games that kind of have a lore. Like I said, Overwatch, Apex, you know, Call of Duty's Warzone, uh, Rainbow Six Siege, like there's always these multiplayer games that are multiplayer games that, yeah, there's kind of a lore, but unless you are really actively following online and going through the new trailers that they're coming out with, like you have no idea what's going on. But in this game, it's perfectly set up to being, here's all the stuff, here's all the story. If you want to go through the story, you can watch through it. So that's what I loved about it. Yeah. I mean, I think it's it's a really neat means to an end that they set up and and I think there's something to be said for that because I, I, I just found out. I knew the rogue AI existed. I mean, it's there at the end. Start he's he's I, constantly talking. Exactly. To you, yeah. So I'm aware of the AI. <laughs> I didn't, Match 30. I didn't Wait, there's an AI? I actually know that the AI was like 
why he was or she or why it's sending people back. I didn't know really any of this. I knew that I hit start game. I knew that I loaded game and then I shot dinosaurs and yeah. then I won or lost. And I had a ton of fun doing that. Is it, and I have no problem with the story being there. Like it doesn't bother me. I just didn't really care. I did watch a few of the cutscenes. Um, they're not bad, it's, but it's, it's one of those things that I think it's enough there that if you do like a story element to games, it's cool that it's there. But if you're like me and you couldn't care less if a story is in a game at all, especially in one like this, you can skip it, like Andrew said, and you can play the game fully without it. Like, it may, So I don't know. Like, it, I, Maybe you can help me with this, Andrew, because I have not kept up with Apex. From what I remember with Apex or even, say, Overwatch, like, no more so Apex, there's not a lot of lore about the world, though, right? It's more just no, the is. individual characters, I thought. like No, no, there's so actually like, a, quite a bit okay, about so, the, so, the world. So never mind all that. Because I was going to say, like, yeah. as far as this goes... It seems like I don't know. The lore is all inconsequential. They could they could have purely set this game up like a basic roguelike, and be like, "Hey, there's an, an AI that's sending you back to the past and wants to test you to fight dinosaurs." And it, it could just happen, and there could be no more than that. And their gameplay and everything that Exoprime offer, offers, I think, would still stand on its legs perfectly fine. Yeah, but it's a nice element. And and so I don't really have anything against it. Not that I, I guess, ever have anything against story. But I just, yeah, I, I don't know. I thought it was fine. One of the things I did like to it is that it has some sort, not gameplay changes, but like you actually pointed it out to me, but at the main menu screen, you as you go through the different menus, there's different characters that are part of the story. And things that happen in these cutscenes that you watch will actually change how they're interacting in the main menus. You know, one of the characters gets shot and then from then on they have a bandage on their arm or one of them was really upset about something. And so you go and he's talking to you know somebody about something. It's just I thought that was a cool kind of thematic element yeah. to it, I guess, that, again, it, I, you wouldn't notice it or care if you don't really pay attention to the story. But if you are, it's it's just a subtle neat thing that they do and and i do give them a lot of credit for that i guess i found the story really engrossing um yeah because like I, I at the beginning keith i agreed with you when you were like i didn't quite know what this gameplay was i thought this was going to be like a 4v horde or 5v horde kind of like a left for dead or a you know left behind not left what was it left for dead left for dead and what was the one we did no. back for blood there we go that's the game um so i thought it was gonna be kind of gameplay like that but then when i found out that oh no there's actually like pvp elements to it you know, and I just saw that it was like, yeah, you're in robot suits shooting dinosaurs. Like this, the game idea sounds like like a five year old kind of came up with it. Like, yeah, what if you're in mechs and shot dinosaurs? Like, okay, but it actually works super well, and that's why I was surprised that the story is actually interesting. Like, how they're explaining, you know, why you're in these suits, why you're shooting dinosaurs, and like kind of the the actual like motivations of your party members like if you tried to fight one of those dinosaurs outside of a suit that's why you're in a suit (laughs) (laughs) have you seen what they do to the suits at the end of the game also a good reason to be in the suit (laughs) well the suit clearly doesn't protect you better than no suit there's one thing that i thought was kind of confusing so i end up changing the appearance of my character which i originally it said male or female (laughs) and i did female but then it did male anyways i was like that's fine whatever i don't know what's happening and then (laughs) so with the cutscenes, the main character magnum he looked like the original character he didn't have the face of the character that i picked yeah. And so I I knew like all oh, the story that must be like the main character but they have what is it other timeline characters. Yeah. So you're looking at like the the same characters in two different timelines but obviously the the main character does not match. So I can see like if like how it would be confusing for somebody playing the game be like is that supposed to be a different character? Cuz like I Yeah, I don't know. I I thought did that was to supposed you? to be your character. But I think he might also be Alder, the other crew member of yours. He's up, but I'm not quite sure. Like that's that was kind of confusing on like who he was. I thought it looked just like the original character. I thought so too. So that's why I was like, did you change your character? No. Yeah. So I didn't really. Oh, then you then you would know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. My character looks kind of goofy. So it's like I don't know. To me, 
It didn't look too much like my character because my character just looks really weird. Oh, I just assumed that was supposed to be my character. I don't know. I think it's weird that I even have to wonder that, though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this game, the story gets a little convoluted because it does deal with a whole lot of time traveling and alternate realities. So I know some of the elements can get a little confusing. It was kind of annoying some of the dialogue when, like, a time travel thing comes up. When they, like, find the body of one of their crew members from a different timeline. They're like, what? I'm dead? And it's like, how have you guys not learned that we're dealing with time traveling dinosaurs and alternate realities? And, like, your crew members are still surprised when they see, like, one alternate version of themselves somewhere. And it's like, okay. I mean, that would be shocking to see yourself dead, though. I guess. I mean, you gotta, I mean... That's really, that would be really hard. But yeah. I mean, if we're going to talk about dialogue, Andrew, you got to bring up the mom. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. Because <laughs> you told me about it. And it was right at the beginning. And I was like, oh my gosh, he's right. That's exactly what they said. Okay. I thought what I just said it. So I, you probably don't remember because we played, we played this game originally with it the first week it came out. Yeah. And I skipped so a lot character- of the early dialogues and such too. So one of the characters you meet that you talk a lot with is his name is Magnum. So, you know, they're probably going to make some sort of sexual reference jokes, and they do. Oh. And uh, the joke they make, too, I thought I misheard it, but the guy makes a joke kind of alluding that he has relations with his own mother. And I don't know, because this is from Capcom, which is a Japanese studio. I don't know if there was some sort of uh, English translation error, and he was supposed to say something like, your mom, but he definitely said his own mom. Yeah. Uh, and it's kind of weird. <laughs> like when I heard that joke, I'm like, I'm like, did I hear that I, right? Like, I, I'm not, I'm not justifying. But <laughs> please, please <laughs> don't. <laughs> is it, is it like a weird Back to the Future type of thing? Like Marty McFly doesn't realize he's chasing his mom. Like, I, like no, maybe I that's think it's a, what happened to Mr. Magnum. I, will, I uh, think it's a translation error because uh, probably else, more like that. Nobody right? else flinched about it. It's horrifying. Yeah, we're, we're going to go with translation error. But otherwise, yeah, I don't know. Maybe just a, a weird Back to the Future reference, we'll say. <laughs> nope, didn't catch that one. Find I didn't. Find out you're your own father. I am my own grandpa. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, but overall, though, the dialogue and the actual story bits, elements of it, because there actually is a decent amount of humor in this game. And I actually like the characters. And like, I... Like, it was investing more in the story. I see where you're coming from, Liz, of that you wish you got more of their backstory up front to care for these characters. But you definitely learn way more about them as the game goes on. But it does take a while. Because, like I said, you got to play matches to just unlock these story elements. But I just felt like the amount of time that I put in, which was a little under five hours. Bad Liz, I mean, come on. I, I didn't, didn't hit that didn't hit exact five-hour mark. You're good. Um, yeah. But I just felt like... I didn't get enough of the story. And then with the gameplay, it takes a while to really level up and to get the modules and stuff. And so for me, like five hours in this game and you really don't get much. Well, one thing I was going to say, it's, I have a, you know, obviously I, I, I don't do stories typically, but it's, I think it's a weird separation of when we're like, talking about connection to the characters since the story was so separated from my character that I'm playing with or who are, or the teammates or enemies I'm playing with. I, I feel like they were two separate things. Like there could have just been a TV show of Exo primal and then there could be the game of it. And it's, that's where I think I struggled to really care about the story, especially if this was similar more to an apex or an overwatch where the characters that I'm playing in game are also the ones that are part of the story, then I can see the connections. But without that, it just kind of feels like two separate things that are linked, but not really linked. I think that's a really good point. The the past. All right. Yeah. I see where you're coming from, but it's kind of weird that you're saying this too, of like, like apex, like in apex, you're actually playing different people. Technically, in Exoprimal, you are playing your one pilot right. who is piloting different suits. But this is also what's kind of weird about the story. Your character is a is a mute idiot, and I hate when a game does this. And it's and it, some moments of the cutscenes are very awkward. Well, yeah, because then it just makes you like a bystander, and then it yeah, it's like you're there, but you're just <laughs> watching a story for no reason. Yeah, and your but your way your character acts too when someone's like. 
how could you do this? And they look at your character. Your character literally has this dumbfounded look like, Ugh. and it's like, could you not give your guy a voice? Like, come on. Like, it's annoying. And even too, when a, a sad moment's going on, your character will go up to someone else and be like, go talk to them. And it's like, <laughs> it's like, how does like, I just hate when your character's just walking around like a mute idiot. But it's weird though, because when you're picking a suit and you're playing the game, your suit has a voice and your suit, like, you know, like you could be playing a female. So all of a sudden now you have a female voice. You could play, you know, Murasami, which is, you know, a like Japanese samurai tank warrior. And now you have a Japanese accent. So it's kind of weird that like your character who's mute is changing his voice to like a feminine voice to a Japanese accent. But uh, as far as the gameplay goes, though, uh, how the games usually work, you know, how the game was originally set up. I'm with you, Liz, where I'm like, I don't care for this game. I think it's going to be boring. It's kind of weird. The interface of the menu is kind of confusing at first. But yeah, you all you are playing are war games. That's your only option, war games. And you have between doing PvE final mission or a PvP final mission or do random. If you do random, you get bonus XP. So I always left mine on random. And like, that's all you're selecting. And so you're essentially sucked into a matchmaking. It's usually a 5v5. You know, first half of the game, you are essentially racing the enemy team. You just see their ghosts. You are trying to essentially do your objectives of killing groups of dinosaurs. You have to kill a certain number of dinosaurs, progress to the next point, kill another group of dinosaurs, produce, go to the next point. And then once you're done with the first half of the mission, it transforms into either PvP or PvE game mode. PvP is usually a push payload kind of game mode. Both teams are on the same map pushing a cube. That's at the time when you can actually go to the enemy cube, try to kill the people, break their cube to slow them down, or, you know, try to defend your cube and keep pushing it and try to repair it if it gets damaged. And you're trying to basically race to the end, which the end just becomes a huge slug fest because both teams are in the same area. And it just becomes this hectic, just brutal fight. And yeah, it's the first one to get their cube there and charge it up and you win. But there's some other PvP game modes, like there's a control point map you can get. You can get one where you're charging up a hammer. But you never pick these game modes. Everything is random. You, you're not picking your map. You're not picking, you know, what you're doing. You're just being put in there. And this kind of goes in with the story. The story, the whole point of the story is, you know, it's being controlled by a rogue AI who's trying to collect data and throw these dinosaurs at you to kind of see what you're going to do. So at first I was with Liz. I was like, okay, I'm just blasting dinosaurs. Like this is getting really repetitive. But what's so awesome is like the presentation of this game of, it actually feels like it's being controlled by an AI. You're, you'll be in the middle of a match and the AI goes, no, nah, I'm changing this and we'll suck both the teams in. And if you play far enough, you end up doing a 10 person raid event which are a ton of fun. You're literally fighting thousands of dinosaurs. The enemy team is now your ally. You have limited lives. And it's just this crazy battle. But that's just what I loved about Exoprimal. You never know what you're getting into. I thought I was going to hate that I don't have control as to what I'm doing. But it was so much fun. And it just made the game like mindless and just blast dinosaurs. And I had a ton of fun with it. I will say... I was talking about how the gameplay and the story are kind of disjointed a little bit. These events are one of the few things that really do tie in directly where you'll yeah. have, I think it was pretty early on. We ran into the first one where it's like a kind of rogue person, but he's an ally. He jumps in and, and interrupts the war game. And like you were saying, I thought this was a really cool storytelling kind of theme to to like that round because the whole time the AI is, is fighting and it recognizes that there's somebody interfering with it and it's trying to stop them at the same time. It's trying to test you. And like, that's kind of a cool thing. Then the raid that you're talking about, that's one of the bad guys that's coming into the gameplay. And so there are some of these characters that come over to it. I just, it's more the, the ones I'm playing, I guess is, is the big thing I was thinking. But yeah, yeah I, I will say, I, I guess I'm going to be on the same boat of the first handful of games. I couldn't really see where this was going to be much more fun than, you know, a neat little game to play. But I, I and I'm really just kind of doubling down what Andrew was saying here, but it's, it's the way that the gameplay changes that I think just makes it so much fun because it, even if it's not these full on raid events, just the, the way that it plays is, you know, as you're going through these PVPs, you know, Andrew mentioned you have these different checkpoints that you go through. If one team starts to really pull ahead on a checkpoint, this, you know, AI, if you will, that's controlling the game, not just 
throws in different elements to the game, it actually starts to handicap the team that's far ahead to try to slow them down. So you never really feel like you're getting completely obliterated, and you do, and it is possible. There's, there was a couple matches well, we did. I'm not, we listed. I'm not saying it can't happen, but you you largely never feel like you are. And even still, I maybe it's just because there's no form of ranked mode or anything like that. I just never felt like, oh, man, I'm so mad that we lost. It was just kind of like, yeah. ah, that sucked. Let's do this again. That was fun. Yeah. I just, I, I never felt upset about winning or losing a game. I, I just wanted to keep playing it. Uh, but yeah, I just, the, the ever changing nature of the gameplay to me is really just what makes it so much fun because you, you don't really know when it's going to happen, but because of that AI is speaking, you can pick up on little hints of it here and there where it's like, Oh, interruptions detected. And you're like, Ooh, something good's going to happen. And you just, yeah, I remember you like, said that. You're so like, oh, excited. did you catch that Andrew? He said something different. He's doing something. And I was like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. It just, I, I'm always excited to be like, what's going to be. And then there was the one you're talking about that I still haven't got a chance to where the game just starts out in a full on PVP with both teams together. And you go like, with like a survival mode, basically. Right. Yeah. That's like a little bit later. Yeah. So like, there's just so many different little things to it that I think are so fun to play and i i don't know i could put hours and hours into the game but i also think you know comes negative liz (laughs) (laughs) i'm sorry you know maybe if you won a few more games liz you would have had more fun i won enough games thank you very much um i thought too that andrew would he would look at the numbers or the levels of the other players and we we could kind of gauge whether or not we we're going to win though so <laughs> yeah. the the matchmaking is very uneven it's very and unbalanced, yeah. if someone's a 200 they've unlocked all the cool stuff that i don't have and so but if your team is substantially higher up than you it's just like you know so yeah. i think that's kind of a negative with the with the matchmaking because like again not to bring up apex but i am um when you go in, even if you're like a low level, if you're good enough, you're still going to do great. But in yeah. this, it's just like, ooh, I don't know. Yeah, in a game like Apex, it's all skill. But yeah, with Exo Primal, you're leveling up your account and you're leveling up each personal suit as you're playing them. So yeah, if someone is level 200, they're going to have maxed level mods. They're going to have insane like attachments to their character. And so this game does have a little bit of like, the more you play, the stronger you are as like, your you know your the suits you're piloting so there actually is a bit like of an element there that you know whoever's been playing more is just going to destroy you but i feel like since this game focuses so much more on a pve i didn't care as much because it is until the second half where there is possible pvp moments and they could come over and just start destroying you but yeah so but as keith said like the ai will still kind of throw in things to slow down that team that's obviously way more overpowered than you well sometimes because i was playing with you and we were getting our butt kicked oh, and yeah. then they gave the other team the opportunity to be the dinosaur and just wreck Before us we do, which yeah what is weird. it denominator or? yeah the, the yeah dominator the dominator um did it's say, not did, math did, did yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> you know the famous dinosaur the denominator yep um so for me for me it wasn't always like that either so that's why it just you know yeah, but as Key said, I never cared if I lost. Like, in, as Key said, there's no ranked mode. So it is just, you're just playing to have fun. And I, I was just having a ton of fun. So if, if I lost, which losing is kind of rough because they always give you a cinematic of your character being torn to shreds by dinosaurs. Yeah, every time. Yeah, that's kind I of don't like, like no, that. that's sad. But I, yeah, I just, I thought the gameplay was just so fun. I can think of something that I think the game did great. Mm-hmm. I felt like the tutorial. Tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> really prepared me because I knew because I I love playing assault. I did Dead Eye, yep, for the most part. And I the other characters like I I knew like how to play the witch doctor and how to do like the shield guy. I don't remember the names. Roadblock. It's fine. Um, but I felt like the tutorial really prepared me, and I knew how bad I was at being the dominator. You got it. Um, I did not care for that in the tutorial. I was so bad at it. And so for me, I just didn't, I didn't want to do it. <laughs> I always said, not me. Yeah. I thought it was funny. It's like, Liz, do you want to be the dominator? No one wants to do it. It's an achievement. And you're like, no, thank you. I don't want to do it. But yeah, if your team's losing, you know, each team eventually will get a dominator, which, you know, a player gets to control a dinosaur and attack the enemy team and get to basically destroy him as a dinosaur. 
and you know try to, to slow the enemy team down so your team can you know push the objective quicker but yeah these elements like it's just it's it's just mindless fun i don't know what else to say about it i so i mean talking about the attachments and the mods like i think they're helpful but i don't know that i had any of them went wow i'm like overpowered now like I think the closest that I can think of is with Deadeye, the kind of basic assault per character, when I got the ability to reload quicker. But it still wasn't like a dominating change. It was just more like, oh, this feels smoother and like better to play. So I don't, I don't know. Maybe I just didn't notice it or whatever, but I don't feel like people being overpowered, like, it's like I couldn't fight them because of that. I thought it was just because... I would run into situations they were either better or I don't know maybe they were in a better situation because they had three of their teammates and I didn't like that was more where I felt like I was losing to people. See, I disagree. Well, like I've never felt like they were better than me in the PvP moments, but I feel like the mods greatly help you in the PvE moments. Probably and more so than I give really... credit for. I will say, but I just I don't know that I f- I didn't feel like it. I noticed it at least. Yeah, if you're playing the grenade launcher guy and you have the mod where your flames last longer and you just have the dinosaur standing on flames constantly taking damage, yeah. Or, you know, you have increased stun grenades and you can stun a big dinosaur, especially if they're trying to run away. And instead of having to chase the dinosaur, you can quickly stun it and kill it. Yeah, like the mods will drastically help you. Yeah, that's, I think, when that's it comes a good to point. I, I wasn't really thinking of those ones and because I actually only got the second one for Deadeye just recently the the one that improved my grenade and it was yeah. and it was actually a pretty noticeable change it's it just was a lot more effective because it shot in a straight line instead of being like a grenade launcher lobber yeah and then like with dead eye i have the mod where if you're doing consecutive shots it's increasing your damage by like 25 percent. yeah so like as i'm just shooting the big dinosaur like my numbers are just going higher and higher so no, you you can see a big difference, especially with, when it comes to the PVE, um, and it makes sense too because you didn't get as far as I did, Keith. But I actually started to unlock new map locations, and they get insane. Like usually when you're playing, you're fighting one, two kind of medium to large dinosaurs, but yeah, the areas I'm playing at, you're getting thrown like four, five at a time. These massive dinosaurs. So like you need to have a good group and good mods to kind of go, but. Like I said, I like I just thought the game was so mindless and fun that I also didn't care that I was losing. Like, you know, if I'm playing Overwatch, if you're playing Apex, it makes a world of a difference to have friends. You are playing with friends. You guys are coordinating, you know, what roles you're playing. But in this, I didn't care. You know, there's three roles, Assault, Support, and Tank. So a lot of people do the basic meta, you know, that got popularized from World of Warcraft. You know, three DPS, a healer, and a tank. But you don't have to do that. You know, the game will say, ah, your team doesn't have a tank. You guys might want to do a tank, but you don't have to do it. If you have a good enough team that everyone can run and, you know, an assault and you have one person who's a good healer, you could get away with it. But I never also cared if people wanted to play. Like, I didn't care if we had multiple people playing Barrage. Like, if I'm playing Overwatch, it's like, no, I don't care how good you are at Widowmaker. We don't need a third sniper. Please get off a Widowmaker. But in this game, it did not matter. I could care less if everyone's a sniper, if everyone's a grenade launcher dude. I just, it was fun. If you were good with that guy, you could kill people quick enough. I don't care. I actually liked seeing my improvement in the game. Oh, so, the score? Yeah, because yeah. at first I was always bottom. And then when you, you aren't the worst player and you get like a title, yeah. it's all exciting. And in the last game that Andrew and I played, I saw somebody playing the tank and he was doing, or she, he or she, uh, <laughs> person yeah the person <laughs> uh was doing such a great job and i was like well if i ever play the character like i want to do what he's doing so i was playing but also like trying to watch him because he was just killing it he yeah. was like the he was the mvp he was yeah that he got game MVP award. yeah so um for me i felt like i was actually learning a lot while playing yeah. I mean, you make up. I this is a thing I really greatly want to praise with this game because Overwatch used to be really good with their score tracking and stuff like that. But with Overwatch too, it's been kind of a hot mess. But yeah, as Liz was saying, in the top right corner of the screen, you can see your personal score. And man, did that drive me! I am constantly like, oh, I did like eighty thousand last game. I got to get higher than the score with this character. Like seeing that score just constantly made me want to get more medals, kill more dinosaurs, heal more of my teammates, and it's just it's an awesome driving factor to do better. 
And yeah, you get MVP at the end. It's essentially whoever is on the winning team at the highest score. And what I loved about it, I saw every single suit get MVP. Like if you're playing Overwatch, 90% of the time, DPS is getting MVP. Every once in a while, Tank will get it if they do a good alt. But in this game, I saw everybody get it. There was never a suit that I'm like, oh, of course he got it. He played that guy. That guy's overpowered. No, I thought the balance was so good that everyone could get MVP. Well, and I I think it, that is a matter more of it just being an MVP based on score. And I still think it, to your point exists that anybody or you could play any character and still manage to get the top score versus like overwatch where it's i don't know it does that it does a play of the game system where i don't know about half the time it gets it right of what actually yeah. is the best play of the game sometimes it's you know somebody cleaning up junk but all that to say it's i think that's where the like that separates a, a little bit but i think you're right though is, well, is overwatch used saying. to do awards and they don't do that anymore. Oh, and this game does. True. I do miss the awards. That was yeah, fun. and you could you could you could uh, send accolades to people for like having a good award. That was but yeah, so this much one. Better. Yeah, but this one does uh, five awards. You know, most damage with a grenade launcher, most damage block, most heals. Like, I love. I forgot. I forgot how much this game reminded me how much I forgot and missed awards at the post game and loot boxes. This oh, game has yeah. loot boxes. And I freaking love loot boxes. I, I remember when loot boxes were the hot thing, and I was like, I am so sick of loot boxes. These are greedy. They're gross. Now everyone is a battle pass, and I'm sick of battle passes. Like, can we go off of battle pass and go back to loot boxes? Because loot boxes the, at least has an element of fun and surprise, and I get the, yeah. the, 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 the gambling, gambling and all. Yeah. Like, I totally understand that, but for someone who puts zero dollars into it, whether it's a battle pass or a uh, loot box... Man, I love the excitement of of a loot box versus a boring free battle pass, which has, has a bunch which of. This, uh, this does have a battle pass. Too. Well, yeah, but I'm just saying, like it, the the free battle passes are like, hey, here's an armor set that's crappier than anything that exists in the game pre- previously. Well, I'm never gonna <laughs> use that. It's not even cool. But they'll put it there just to say you got something. Yep. Give me a give me a chest and a point one percent chance at a legendary. I'd rather that. Yeah, same. Absolutely same. But yeah, this game does have a battle pass. And I got to say, this actually is a decent battle pass. Uh, you have to pay, spend real dollars, which is $9 if your game pass subscriber. No, it's $8 if your game pass subscriber. But yeah, there's no in-game currency. So you're not like earning in-game currency and you can buy the next season battle pass. But I got to say the battle pass had really cool cosmetics. It still obviously had some filler of stamps, you know, player cards and emblems. But I felt like 90% of the things you could unlock in the premium battles pass were cosmetics, whether it be weapon skins, character skins, um, like different variations of things like that. Like it actually was pretty decent. Yeah. But uh, yeah, for an early on game, we've seen some pretty cool skins. Like one of the tanks that was just a giant clown suit. Yep. There was one where the guy's like a zombie uh, guy is a football player. Yeah. There's some pretty cool looking skins. Capcom does a really good job with their skins. I don't think we've given Liz the chance to talk in like 15 minutes. I'm just looking at the time. I'm sorry, Liz. What can you please? I think we've been not shutting up, and that's and that's I, on us, not you. <laughs> because we, we like I just too much. I just looked at the time and I was like, I don't think I've heard Liz in, in like 15 minutes. But you know, I just love the positivity reading off of both of you, and <laughs> like so that's why I'm just listening. And and uh, but I. I will say I was looking at the skins for like you just said like the football one. I actually noticed that and I was looking through them. I thought they were really cool. Yeah. Um, I didn't know how you got them or anything because I you know didn't look into it. But <laughs> but one thing that um, I saw a lot of people complaining about because you just said it was like eight eight dollars yeah or something or seven dollars when you're a game pass subscriber yeah because people were already complaining about the price of the game so yeah. that's why for me i'm hearing you say like oh yeah it's eight dollars and like people are really furious at the price tag so yeah if you aren't a game pass subscriber and you're looking to buy this game it is uh sixty dollars or no actually i think it's seventy dollars i think it's sixty dollars on pc on steam but that's yeah it's hard. it's a full price game which really i think kind of sucks like if this game got off a of Game Pass and it was forty bucks, I I think there's a very good chance I'd buy it. But sixty bucks, yeah, I don't know about that. Man, but I, I know for a fact I would definitely come back to this game like later on. So that's why it's like, yeah, I'd probably buy this if this got off Game Pass. I don't think I would have bought this game for sixty bucks without having played it first. Yeah. Would I think oh, yeah. about it now? Probably, yeah. 
but I don't think there's a chance you would have. I like I'm very selective on what I pay for in games now, and just yeah, I don't, I don't, because you like you and Dave have talked up Remnant, uh, Remnant Two, and I yeah. still haven't pulled the trigger on that game, and so like I don't know, I I don't think I would buy this game even at sixty bucks. I'd even I probably wouldn't even recommend it for sixty bucks because man, I feel like this could be a game that's actually free to play. And then yeah. like twenty five bucks unlocks everything, and then ten bucks for a battle pass. Like, I actually don't. But sixty bucks is as fun as this is, and as much as I love it, sixty bucks or seventy bucks is way too much for this game. Yeah, but at least, like I said, at least they have loot boxes. Because I always hate when you're paying full price for a game and there's a battle pass. You're looking at you, Diablo. Like I just like because it just seems kind of gross and greedy. I will say I was opening up the the different things that you get at the end. And half the time I didn't even know what they were, but I was still excited to get them. <laughs> I knew what the <laughs> money <shiny>. was. <laughs> yeah, I love the money is called Bitcoin because you're on Bikatoa Island. That just made me laugh. So I wanted to ask you guys, what was your favorite suit and class that you guys like to play as? Liz, you go first. I was a terrible gamer at playing this <laughs> because I love Deadeye and I just kept playing Deadeye because in the tutorial you can play the, the other classes and I just, I, I knew what I wanted and I loved, and that's the thing, like I loved playing Deadeye, like I actually really enjoyed like his different abilities and things like that. So that's why I felt like if this game was different, I would have loved it. Like if it wasn't so samey, because I actually really love playing that character, and that's one of the, my favorite things about the game. Maybe you're just getting into hero shooters. Maybe we need to find another hero shooter for you. What's a hero shooter? Like what, what games have you played? Like that? this? Well, Overwatch is the most famous hero shooter. Oh, I have never played Overwatch. I've seen you play it a ton. Yeah. Oh, we should do, we should get Liz. Liz, you need to play Overwatch. I, mean, I think it's one of those games that I would really enjoy playing it, but watching it looks boring to me. And it's weird because I love watching you play Apex. Yeah. Um, but watching Overwatch, it just looks boring, but I think I would like it. Uh, or Rainbow Six Siege, you could argue, is also here a, shoot, a shooter. I enjoyed that. Yeah. Yeah, I really like that one. I also think too, because I you can hear other people talking in this game. Yeah, I just a, muted them a little bit. But what I did hear them when you were when you were playing by yourself before I had picked up the game, and the people seemed really nice. <laughs> like sometimes, like I, I when you turn on Apex, it's like it gets pretty nasty. Yeah. Like um, I've heard like there's I remember one time you were playing it and you forgot to mute it. And there's like these two people angry at each other on your team. And one of them was saying a bunch of racist things. And the other person was saying a bunch of homophobic things. And I was just like, hot damn. (laughs) But you you hear. That never happens. (laughs) There's so much swearing and stuff. I feel like it's more rare to hear like a, a teammate that's like being nice, not saying anything negative. But I heard them playing when you were playing. And I was just like, this is really pleasant. (laughs) No, I, I was going to say that, Liz. That's the one thing that I I, I feel bad because I think you would like Overwatch. But my goodness, the community is so stinking toxic that yeah. I, like, I, like, I feel bad putting you into that situation almost. <laughs> well, I – so Andrew usually – mutes games and stuff and yeah. i feel like i could just do that yeah but it just like <laughs> i mean i feel like it'd be hard if someone was being rude to me to keep my mouth shut at the same time but yeah there was like, oh man i would love to see liz get into an argument with somebody but i couldn't Gosh. keep my mic on because if somebody startles me and i yell like i'd really annoy people like no, that I happened a couple that times see a thieves <laughs> yeah what happened when we were playing this game where like all of a sudden like something pops out at me and i'm like Ugh! And I, I feel like I would annoy people, but I know that I'm annoying, so I, I would prevent myself from doing that. But there was one guy when we were playing, when you were playing this game, and he was like, "Oh, this is my first time playing the game, so I, I hope I'm all right." And I was just <laughs> like, "This is just such like a a pure nice conversation." Yes, I, well, I think actually I heard one of those those yells that you let out because there was one game that I stepped off while you guys while I was playing with you guys last night, but I left my headset on. <laughs> I was like, walking around my house because I was trying to figure out why I thought I could hear people talking outside my house. And then I realized that it was <laughs> the two of you coming through on my headset. Uh, yeah, Amber was concerned because she's <laughs> like, 
Pirates Who's Fantasy. screaming? Yeah, basically. It's not scary. It's not a scary game. I don't know why I get startled, but well, you know, the dinosaurs pop out when, you know, a thousand of them come out of the big purple ball, I guess. <laughs> Well, can I just say, I also, I still feel bad that I was rude to you, Keith. You were? I see. Oh. I I was so embarrassed. Like, I know so many people who just, like, they they just talk. Like, the second a thought comes to their mind, they don't even think about it. They just say it. And it was one of those moments where I feel like I'm not, like, usually like that. And I was just, like, I'm still embarrassed about it. You know, I, I appreciate it, but... Like I'm starting to wonder, do I put off a vibe that I can't take a joke? Because because um, <laughs> when we recorded Terraria, Dave and Amber, I had, I had joined the call, and Amber was apparently surprised uh, and just started laughing hysterically at the sight of my face. And I think Dave still feels bad about it. And Dave, if you're listening, I don't. I it was funny. I I still laugh about it, but it's okay, Liz. I I actually thought it was hilarious because you didn't realize it was me. That made it funnier. <laughs> So the context for the listener, okay. in, in the pregame of each match, each team is on a separate platform. So you can see the enemy team in the opposite platform. Keith was just shooting because you can't damage the team. There's an invisible wall. He's shooting at the enemy team to uh, kind of intimidate them. And Liz just makes a comment of, oh, look at this idiot shooting the enemy team. You can't do anything, buddy. And then you go, I didn't oh, say idiot. Keith. I did not say idiot. I will say I was not name calling. I was, I was said, just look like, look at this I, cool guy is what I think yeah, he said. said. Yeah. Oh, I Sorry. did. That makes it even worse. <laughs> okay, look at this um, guy shooting the enemy team. But I also want to point out, though, that, Keith, you do not seem like the guy that would be, like, blasting his gun showing off have either, you, though. Have so you that's not met why, me? That's exactly I guess not. what I would do. Especially you know, if there's a pregame where I can just mess around with stupid crap like that. Oh, my gosh. Uh, you, <laughs> with Rocket League, uh, when you do the tournaments, there's a little pregame lobby. Oh, yeah. I am the one who is never letting off the boost button the entire time. <laughs> I'm flipping through the air. Oh, I am so annoying. I'm just pointing my butt at people. It's great. Yeah. I just really wasn't expecting it to be you. And I like learned, like, Liz, you need to think before you speak. You're, you're rude. Oh, man. Um, which, by hilarious. the way, Rocket League, I played that years ago. I wonder if I'm still so terrible at it. Oh, it's so dang hard. I, I love I Rocket League, but it's that. so much fun. Yeah, I played. I think I played with with Dave once too because he's really good at it. And I was just like, I did really bad. I forgot about that. I kind of feel like I shouldn't ever play that game again because I was so bad. <laughs> it's, but it's, oh man, people who are on that game are way too good. Like it's yeah. There's either I, really really good it. or there's me. Let's talk a little bit of graphics of uh, Exo Primal. What did you guys think of the design? I gotta say, I mean, I don't. Let one of you go first. I, I've been talking too much this episode. I did like the graphics. One thing that I noticed, and it might be because I'm, I mean, it is because I'm unobservant. But so when your team like first starts going to a new area, I felt like maybe the yellow line wasn't like popping up as soon because everyone started running. I'm like, how do they know what direction to go? And no, it was people only- are guessing. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's part of the thing. People are assuming... So between every time you do an objective, there is a eye that guides you and sends a waypoint for you that you're supposed to follow this yellow line. But like as I said, it's a race. You're you're seeing the enemy team's ghost, so you can kind of see that they're ahead. So if they're ahead, you can see their ghost, and so you go, oh, my objective is going to be there. But yeah, there's like a five second delay until the waypoint shows up. So that's why a lot of people are running because they're guessing the route. Well, it's the same with like the, when we were playing together and there was that yell, the, the dinosaur was fleeing. And I was like, I don't know if I'm supposed to follow. So I just followed it and I thought I was doing the wrong thing. Yeah, you and were the only one at the dinosaur fighting it. So I, was, I, I wasn't sure about that. But like the way that it's laid out, I'm definitely glad I played with you because I never in a million years would have noticed the dinosaur count at the top. Like you need to kill like these dinosaurs. Yeah. And stuff. So, I, I mean, graphically, I liked it, but I just like I, I didn't notice things right away. I guess. Yeah. I, as far as the graphics go, for me though, I think overall I liked them. I, it's it's kind of becomes one of those things where the gameplay takes over so much for me that I I ultimately am looking much more at that, and I kind of forget to look at the graphics overall. But I thought the overall design of the dinosaurs was cool. 
and especially because you know as you progress through these things you just start to fight these upgraded versions of the dinosaur so all of a sudden one has a gas bubble on his back then it's a sniper and then there's the robot dinosaurs and then the big purple dinosaur in the raid and yeah so it's maybe that's four different t-rexes that you fight but they all look so different and cool and i I just i love the dinosaur designs and i think that's kind of the main focal point of it the the individual units that you have your uh, different mech suits they're cool but outside of i think when they're skinned with some of the cooler or more unique skins they're kind of forgettable for me. I just, I look at the dinosaurs and I think that they do an awesome job with those. See, I mean, I disagree with you about the, the suits, but besides that, I, I think overall the graphics are really good in Exo Primal. Because to me, this game has just a lot of polish to it. There's a lot of little details I kept noticing that I think are awesome. So like when it comes to the suits, uh, like there's a sniper suit, uh, Vigilante. You, she like I, I was not playing her. One of my teammates was, and I noticed any time he was zooming, like she had like extra like little toes or I don't know like little pedestals that kind of came out of her feet to kind of steady her. So it was like this weird design. Like it doesn't change anything with the gameplay, but like me as another person, I noticed that these like things were coming out to stabilize her as a sniper to make her shot steady. And same, like I played Nimbus a lot. She's a healer. She has like these little compartments in her sleeve. And every time she reloaded, like these arms would come out and exchange the magazines. Cause she was dual wielding. So like the, the suits actually, when you look at them have a really cool polish to them and things on them are actually like a functional animation to them. It really awesome design. And same with the, the dinosaurs, the dinosaurs actually had awesome animations to them. You're having a screen literally full of thousands of dinosaurs at some point. And I never had any frame rate issues. I never noticed any sort of dip. And there's tons of explosions going on and dinosaurs dying. But the dinosaurs actually would have unique animations. Like some of them would catch on fire and actually like stop, drop, and roll and try to like extinguish themselves. Like there was actually really cool interactions to the damage the dinosaurs would receive. And it was it was awesome to see. Like this game can be a visual mess. But awesome. There was one event me and Keith did, uh, one we never saw before, where we're fighting. All of a sudden, the AI sent a portal in this tube. The tube explodes, and flaming raptors start shooting out of it by the thousands. It was an amazing event. Like It was just these crazy things that are happening, but there's no frame rate issues. Like, I could still register what's going on. I mean, kind of. You're seeing globs of flesh of dinosaurs, and you just say, I'm just going to shoot in that general area. I'm sure I'm going to kill people. But yeah, damage numbers are popping up everywhere, so you know you're hitting people. So you always know that you're kind of going, like, in actually making contact. My only complaint, though, when it came to the graphics is I never knew when I was low health. Like, I had a hard time noticing if I'm really getting hit or if I'm low health, and then all of a sudden I'm just dead. And it's like, okay, I, I didn't know as well. I also think, too, sometimes I didn't know if I died or not because yeah. the way that it kind of goes slow-mo, but sometimes I didn't die and I just got blown, but yeah. it was the same kind of thing. And I also wish that, because I played Dead Eye a lot, when you throw the grenade, I wish that there was, like, a better indicator of where you're throwing it. I just didn't think that it was that great because i mean in other games you have like the red line or whatever yeah. and i actually did fairly well with aiming but there were a couple times where i was just like i i don't understand what just happened and i also think graphically they did really good with the color so like you see the other team like their silhouettes yeah, and stuff yeah. and then also like when the dominator from the other team is there like you you know you see that red, red ring mm-hmm. yeah. and so they did like different things with color that i i really liked and helped me kind of navigate one thing well and I, I i mentioned it earlier one of the mods you do get for dead isle is is it actually makes the rocket launcher lobber more of a or grenade like shot so you actually make it or it makes it easier to aim because it's aiming just the same way as like you're actually shooting when you're using your rifle so that's kind of cool. Um, but I do yeah. agree with you otherwise. There's no really visual indicator to know, like, how you're aiming the trajectory of the of the shot. So there's, like, weird little things. I agree because I uh, the same with you, Andrew, the, the health thing. I, I never really knew where I was at unless I looked down at my health bar and I just I, – I, there was too much going on. But one thing I think, and it's it doesn't take anything away from it, I think what they do is a really smart design if I'm right – is when you have when they put those on-screen animations of like the thousands of dinosaurs the 
thousands of dinosaurs you're seeing, it's like it's all background and it's almost like a green screen. And they're really only spawning them probably like like they're just popping them no. out of it. Because you can shoot them and get damage numbers. Well, you can, but there's still only like a certain point. Because I'm and I'm thinking more of like the raid one where they're pouring down the wall. Like I don't think you can shoot them when they're up on the wall because they're not real dinosaurs at that point. It's almost more like a water effect with dinosaurs exchange for the water, if that makes sense. It's it just kind of is a video that's happening on the back of the screen, and I think that helps with the frame rate because then they're not actually putting out three thousand units on the screen as far as active interactive characters. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I just I feel like that kind of helps. All that to say, visually, it's awesome, and it and it makes it so cool because it was like you were saying, it was something we had never seen before. We're just going along in this map, and all of a sudden, it like said some weird thing, the AI, and just boom tunnel blows up we all fly backwards dinosaurs are flying everywhere because it was like in the middle of a fight too so it wasn't yeah. even like hey you got to this this checkpoint and this thing happened it was just i don't know it was a, it was really cool it was so yeah. much fun but yeah getting into the audio though like i think the like surprisingly i really enjoyed having the audio in this game i thought the actual voice acting was good uh the female voice actor uh, majesty or they call her madge she got a little annoying. She has this Russian accent. And some of the dialogue she was saying was just kind of like, okay, I get it. Like I'm ter- like stereotypical, like angry Russian girl. And so like some of her dialogue was just kind of like, okay, I get it. But overall though, I loved having the headset on. Cause as Keith was saying, like if the AI saying something, you're hearing these different cues and you're like, Oh man, is something going to happen? Is something changing? But yeah, like it surprisingly didn't get annoying, even though you're hearing tons of dinosaurs scream and bullets shooting everywhere. It's just, I, I think you do kind of need the audio for this game because especially when you get to the PvP moments, the AI is telling you like all the enemy teams ahead or you're going slower than the enemy team or you know they activated the Dominator. So it's important to hear these audio cues to be like, oh, I got to watch out for a dinosaur about to invade our world. Yeah, audio is good. Yeah, I, I mean, I think one the the thing they do, and you kind of mentioned it, so I don't have to say much more about it, is just that they didn't make the dinosaur noises so obnoxious that when you're hearing yeah. as many as you are that it gets draining i think overall it it stays pretty good um or like keeps a good balance so that's the one thing i'd say and then sure the voice acting is probably fine i don't know i, I agree or i don't <laughs> agree or something like that <laughs> i thought the voice acting was okay i definitely think it could have used jack black i feel like this would be a good <laughs> game for him um i don't know why but it just like came to me and i was just like this game could use jack black and uh yeah overall game could use jack black yeah <laughs> overall I, I thought it was fine all right uh but the achievements though are overall really good uh this game as far as like completing the story because by the time you complete all the story you can get probably 90 percent of the achievements you're looking probably about 30 to 40 hours of gameplay but yeah a lot of the achievements are usually just playing each character uh there's a couple fun ones which are kind of fun for you, but are also kind of awful for your teammates because, you know, they're making you do things that are essentially per- like inhibiting you. Uh, like one achievement is to kill like 20 dinosaurs as the pilot. So you can exit your suit anytime in the middle of a match and just walk around as a human. I didn't know that. Literally dies in like one hit and you have a really crappy machine gun, but get 20 kills is that in a round. So yeah, you're such a kind of slowing your team down, trying to get this achievement. Uh, the other achievement is to uh, change your suit five times in the match and then win. So once again, you're kind of screwing your teammates up because they're like, oh, he's going to support. And then now you're switching his assault. Now you're switching as a tank. So nobody knows what you're doing. But oh, yeah, overall, the achievements are good. That's probably what that guy was doing the other night. When we were, I, was, I was just going to say so that. Mad. I was like, why can't this person just figure out what they're going to do? I can't do anything. They were probably doing it that probably, too. We did not win that game though. So that No, he was like the lowest just, score. So he was trying to do the achievement, but he was really bad at it. Uh, but yeah, you're right. That is kind of funny. Because uh, it, it does work out that way sometimes. I think, I don't know what, 
Liz probably has the scores. I don't need to figure out my scores. Yeah. I, I'm definitely going to 1,000 this game. I know that later on. Like, I know I didn't now, but I'm going to keep playing this game. Andrew, you're at 700 out of 1,000 score, and you got 33 out of 39 achievements. Yep. Keith, uh, 360 with 17 achievements. And I'm 180 with nine achievements, but I also like, I mean, you told me like, oh, do this and you'll get an achievement. I was like, no, thank you. Yeah. So this, this was a game where I actually actively tr- like was like, no, I don't want Because you were trying so hard not to be the worst. <laughs> so you were, I was like, let's just get the Dominator. I was like, playing the Dominator is an achievement. You're like, no, thank you. I don't want to. I'm I will say I tried you. very hard with this game. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to let the team down. And you did great. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Uh, no, you, you, you legitimately... I got a title. You, know, you did. You got a couple of wars a couple of times. Uh, but yeah, so we'll wrap it up here and get to our final thoughts. Uh, uh, I'll kick it off. Because I was the one who started this off with a definite game. And <clears throat> yeah, I stand behind it. I, I, I think Exo Primal is so much fun. Um, I can play it by myself. I can play it with friends and either way, I know I'm going to have fun there. It's a really small thing. I never really said anything about it, but I kind of agree with you, Liz. I think a campaign mode would be kind of fun for focusing more on the storyline. Uh, it doesn't need it by any means, but I think it would be a, a neat little aspect if you could kind of play through the game in some sort of like back for blood type of nature. But that said, I just, I love Overwatch. It's always been one of my least favorite, favorite games to love, hate, and question why I even play video games at times. <laughs> but yeah. it's like this game isn't better than Overwatch for me, but it also isn't worse because, man, Overwatch kind of sucks right now. Um, but it's it's so refreshing, I think, is the best way I can play it because it, it feels like I'm playing that enough that, it, it gets that fix for it, but it's just so much more enjoyable because it's less stressful. I don't really care if I'm losing. I honestly think even if there was a ranked mode and I was losing, maybe I'd be a bit more frustrated. But all the same, it's there's something about the gameplay that just doesn't always feel so annoying when you lose. It just, I don't know, it's just fun to play. So I I have to recommend it especially on game pass i probably would never tell anyone to buy it if anything i would say just get game pass for a month and play it that way and then decide if you want to pay any money for it um do it that way but definitely definitely play it if if you even play any first person shooter ever is what i would say and this is a third person shooter oh whatever you're right but it's any hero shooter of any sort if you if you have ever played one and you think you're capable of it just do it. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, is it a perfect game? No, I don't. I don't do perfect scores in this. I don't. I, I probably think I gave one score over a ninety six, if ever. But I would give this a ninety two, because that's what yeah. I said I was going to give it, and I'm sticking <laughs> by it. <laughs> uh, so as I said for me too, like I think Exo Prime was a ton of fun. It is a very odd and refreshing to play a multiplayer game that has PvP elements to it. And I'm not getting infuriated. I'm not getting mad that my bonehead teammates are not on the point and we're going slow. I was just having a blast. I have played like, I don't know. I think I'm up to like 60 something matches. I just, I think Exo Prime is a ton of fun. The matches are quick too. They're about like 15 minutes a pop. So you're not looking too much into like having to wait around. But, uh, Right now, you know, this game did just come out, so it is still a little bare bones. You are going to be seeing a lot of map locations, but the fact that you're not picking anything, which I thought would be an annoying thing, actually is a really awesome element because you don't know what you're getting into. It's like playing a match is like opening a loot box. You just don't know what you're going to get. And it just, that surprise around the corner just always kept me going. You know, this game already has a bunch of stuff to grind out. You know, there's, you start the game with eight suits but then you can get three more and then you can get the variants there's a they just recently came out with alpha variants of every single suit so with that i think there's a total of a little shy of 20 suits you can play right now and each one of them you're leveling up personally customizing them in their own different ways so there's a lot to grind and unlock in this game which is awesome but that being said i i wish the game at least gave me the option to do the raid events 
because those are a ton of fun. It is so much fun to actually fight a massive dinosaur with this huge health bar that 10 of you are shooting at, trying to revive each other, heal each other, doing these fun platforming events during the boss fight. Yeah, it's it's an exciting game. And I, if you ever are looking for a multiplayer game from a hard day of work that's legitimately fun and not going to get you angry, Exoprimal's the game. Uh, I just, I, I'm really looking forward to what they're coming out with. I would, you know, I just want a little bit more. But yeah, this is easily an 85. I am going to give it a 78. I originally said 75, but then I was like, I, I feel like I liked a little bit more than that. I'm I'm really bad at scoring games that I just like am not into, you know? Because like I see you guys as excitement, I'm just like I just didn't have it. But look, so at- wait, did we bring you up though? Because you said you could maybe be persuaded, so it's still a pass. Yeah, I'd, I'd say, yeah. Okay. But looking at Metacritic right now, it's n- it's not too great. Series X, um, seventy two and three point nine, and then Jeez. Xbox One TBD in three point nine. I can see why people probably don't rate it well. Because I, I can see a lot of people, I mean, you probably would have, Liz, played five matches and been like, okay, I'm doing the same thing, shooting dinosaurs, I'm done. And like that was my first take with the game too. But I saw people online saying that the game was a ton of fun and just like, and so I was like, okay, right, I'm going to keep sticking with it. And yeah, this is definitely a game you just need to stick out with a little bit more. And then it just clicks with you. A lot of it was due to the price. And I, I, mean, I feel like the complaints were actually very varied. Um, but yeah, I, I was really surprised at that score. That's that's real bad. It's still surprising because it's on Game Pass. So I, I figured like this is a perfect Game Pass game or it sh- honestly should be free to play. But yeah, check out Exoprimal. You'll have fun. Unless you're Liz. Then you probably won't have as much fun. I didn't. <laughs> I, I had fun. It was fun playing with you guys, but I just wouldn't have fun if I was by myself. Yeah. But anyway, I think that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, if you have any game suggestions, please, you can reach out to us. Go to GamePassGrabBag.com. You can find all our links. Send us an email. Reach out to us into any of our socials. Send us a carrier pigeon. You know, I don't know if we'll get that one, but yeah, send us some game requests. You know, we always love hearing from our fans. We always love hearing from you guys. So, Yeah. I've been your hardcore gamer host, Andrew. You can find me on Xbox Live at Firebird Z1952. I have been Keith. Dinosaurs. <laughs> and I'm Liz Noob, gamer tag, comment on Dean, and I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Liz Noob Noob is EW. I love the amount of effort Keith puts in. <laughs> the thing is, though, you see me sit here and think about it. So I do think for, I don't know, 10 seconds sometimes about what I'm going to say. And sometimes I can't say anything, so I just say dinosaurs. You used to make fun of me for my long outro of, like, listing everything. I still do. Well, I don't make fun of you for it, but, you know. I mean, I repeat myself every week. I mean, he puts effort into it. If you think about it that way. I guess. But anyway, we love you all. We'll see you again next week. Bye, guys. Bye.